Good evening and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Crypto, the live stream where we talk about crypto news and price action. My name is Mike. All right, guys, we see Bitcoin looking pretty strong, getting a nice bounce to the upside, hit, hitting that $71,000 level, up approximately 2%. Ethereum right around that 3500 obviously getting a bounce as well, but not as strong as Bitcoin, the rest of the crypto space. So these all coins, you know, they're getting a bit of a bounce to the upside. We have Caspa waking up a little bit, Beam, Doge, Theta, many others here kind of holding holding steady definitely holding up the last line in the sand for that support for another bounce or maybe a continuation guys here on the channel we don't mind up down bearish or bullish all we want to do is stay one step ahead of the market so that we can capitalize on any of the volatility and if you appreciate the strategy subscribe to the channel click the bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos including these live streams at 7 30 eastern where we talk about crypto news and price action guys if you want to follow me on the socials the links are in the description below uh, of course feel free to join that Discord. Discord. The Discord is where it's at. Lots of good alpha trade setups, fundamentals, and learning material. All right, guys, let's begin. Let's take a look at the top 100. In fact, before we do that, guys, a bit of news today. Of course, a bit of news. Inflation rates came out higher than expected. But what's more interesting that, okay, inflation rate of 3.5%, whatever, that's fine. Whatever number they want to make up, that's all good. But we can, we all know that the inflation rate on, you know, real necessities, basic necessities for everyday life, you know, are much higher than that. So, you know, what do these numbers really mean? If really, um, you know, they're not really in tune with everyday life, Tran transportation, car insurance, car repairs, hospital services, homeowner inflation rent electricity these are all basic necessities that are much much higher than the basket of goods that they're suggesting suggesting at 3.5 percent so you know cp lie is definitely one of those scenarios that we have to understand you know and i think the market in general especially the crypto market is definitely hardened you know we we really don't even care anymore look what happened we got the cpi data no doubt we even got some more bearish news out of um, uniswap you know what's happening with uniswap we'll t discuss that in a second but really no nobody cares look at bitcoin got a nice fat bounce to the upside and then we got of course the uniswap news which is a little bit bearish obviously you know hit on our DeFi, our ma major our biggest DeFi platform out there is, ge is getting sued by the sec okay so what does that mean for us that means that the pressure is on and i really like in a way i kind of like this i know it sounds kind of weird but I kind of like this. You know, it puts pressure on the on DeFi. It puts pressure on the DEXs to hurry up and figure out a way to become fully decentralized. Why why are we in this issue in the first place? It's because there's a level of centralization and the choke point is Web2, which is the website. Obviously, www.uniswap, you get my point. That right there is the choke point. They're highly controlled. There's no decentralization there. You have to swipe a credit card in order to register that domain. Let's get it off that network and get it on Web3, fully compliant with Web3 uh, protocols. And that way, we don't even need Web2 whatsoever. And uh, uh, basically, unstoppable. Now, of course, the theory is, is that really, okay, fine, they take down Uniswap. We'll, we'll just whip up another Uniswap. We'll come up with another one. You're just going to temporarily take down uniswap but we'll find a solution guys obviously we know that we're resilient crypto in general is resilient number one we're resilient number two we also forget that crypto DeFi, the dex is not just limited to you know the sec or the and, and their jurisdiction in fact it's global does that mean that we're just going to drive uniswap uh, players like uniswap offshore are we just going to give you know places like uh, the asian countries like china the opportunity to take over you know that the whole narrative it could be possible guys we know that right now china's you know creeping in there and uh, as you can see um america is totally pushing people away uniswap is a, a prime example right so this is one of the things that you know in the next little while we're really going to see the true sentiment of the crypto space do we care or are we moving on bull run continuation 100 today i was thinking about you know and i was talking to some of the people on the discord by the way guys join that discord great conversations happening there on a daily basis but there's fun every every bull run post a uh, post bull run post having uh, you know pre-having doesn't matter there's always fud right around the having and we always have our bull run we always make that fat higher high and we always make those gains so this time is it going to be different that is a dangerous way to think the trend is your friend until the end all right guys let's begin let's just take a look at the top 100 real quick i want to see how this market is reacting with this bit of fud guys be um be resilient okay be prepared for a lot of fud i'm surprised we're not getting stablecoin fud there is always a layer of stablecoin fud 
uh, leading into the bull run um usdt uh, you know this and that the collapse of this a collapse of that guys just you know you got to be hard and thick skin this is what it is we've been we we are ready for the battle we've been waiting for the bull run this is where we're at okay so bitcoin getting a nice little bounce to the upside looking okay you know it's still in a, a trajectory to the downside in the last little while yes but this little bounce is looking decent looking really nice bnb is looking strong up five percent and if we keep on going down there are some good reactions in the market although in the short term we're still in this type of retracement dogecoin is up seven percent which is looking good toncoin is going sideways neutralizing all the bearishness of the day and actually in the last you know 24 48 hours type of thing neutralizing that is really really good looking great polka dot you know still in the retracement no sign of strength just just yet um and chain link and many others are still coming down of course uniswap down 10 percent given the fact that a lot of the other projects are down as well um 10 percent is not that bad i expected worse with news like that and, and in addition we also have to understand that you know any lawsuits or any you know we gotta go to fair trial number one and that's gonna take time guys it's very likely that the bull run is going to be done and over we're going to be in a bear market but that but that time so you know what let's take full advantage of this bull run while they figure themselves out and in the meantime hopefully uniswap can figure themselves out and how they can be fully decentralized and not have any choke points near protocol taking that dip uh we have litecoin taking a dip a lot of the market is still in that dip phase regardless of the bit of relief that we see on bitcoin which leads me to believe that you know we could be seeing a bounce in the uh the bitcoin dominance because bitcoin is looking okay while the altcoins are still kind of falling down look at bit tensor down four percent um okay we have v chain looking good five percent to the upside that's not bad caspa as well getting a nice bounce caspa retraced significantly guys if you missed out on my video a couple days back on caspa you know caspa was at a good place to start taking a bit of risk just a bit because you never know we could get that bounce we can get that you know continuation up all of a sudden but you know just bit by bit guys because you never know what happens here in this market i don't know i'm not getting too many signals that the the push to the downside especially on the daily that the bears are done pushing down so we just got to make sure that we you don't don't deploy too much on this dip just yet until we build uh, some confidence and obviously you know the confluence that we get in the charts gives us that confidence so let's just be really uh chill about things until we get that going uh phantom obviously looking good a lot of people talking about that phantom it's up 15 percent in the last seven days pretty good today kind of going sideways all good no no big deal neutralizing negativity that's pretty good third chain kind of picking up a little bit uh ina ithina doing good today 21 percent still grinding to the upside slow and steady you know that's a pretty good thing you know to see a new altcoin uh, a new project come out and grind usually you know they come down and they dip right look at celeste is dipping down maybe we get a good entry there sui as well coming down 11 percent and the rest of the market is pretty the same you can see they're all cookie cutter pretty much the same thing over and over and over dips 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 nervos nervos has been spectacular spectacular look at the market cap all of a sudden we're at 1.5 billion dollar market cap it's up a hundred percent in seven days nervos network ckb guys i'm bullish you guys know that i've been bullish i just you know be you know i'm a bit pretty quiet about it because really it's just now that it started really picking up but nervos is a beast of a project all of a sudden reaching the top 100 pretty good there i'm i'm happy to see that uh what else do we have xec grinding down i know there's a couple of us here on the channel that are interested in this project but so far still the trend is your friend it's still coming down dydx a lot of these projects are still dipping no real sign of reversal just yet so you know what we got to do we still got to be prepared we got to make that plan get a, have an offensive plan in the sense that as soon as we see some signs of bullish reversal we got to be ready we got to be ready to deploy all right guys if you have any projects you want me to cover feel free to let me know in the chat i'm going to be taking those requests and put them in top priority let's begin by looking at bitcoin but before we do that let's go see who's with me here tonight uh donkey dong i already have a couple of requests before i got this going octavia let's do vi and um what is this one um what is this I, I can't even read my writing tonight um it's called medicaid medicaid okay sure let's look at that m c a d e is the ticker we'll take a look at that one for sure uh what else uh what else do we have let's see egld and rose yeah sure no problem these are previous bull run type of projects elron uh, i think that's what we're referring to and rose is e i forget right now what it's uh it's full-on name um egld elrond and that's the micro um yeah that's they changed their name multiverse x or something like that and rose yeah let's take a look at rose sure 
previous bull run projects a bit of nostalgia for me uh good evening and be good evening bunny uh buddy energy 82 good evening donkey dong is here of course seth good evening buddy uh what else do we have here uh gary g gary g for nexa ambassador sure why not as long as he can get it pumping because that thing is not really you know holding up right now it's, it's doing its thing there at the bottom if if uh, gary g can do its, his the thing and get this thing running sure why not and b can we take a look at veracity sure let's do that veracity i don't remember the ticker but we'll do our best uh and b uh, btc looks very strong yeah i do i do see it looking very strong you know this consolidation is not bad I, I'm, I'm okay with it but i'm still not interested i know it sounds kind of um counterintuitive yeah i do feel like it's strong it does look like a bull flag but i'm not interested i like honestly like really it, it did well already um if it breaks out awesome you might want to put a little a, a bit of leverage on that so you can get some volatility but i would be quick to take profits because i don't trust a next pump to be honest and if, even if it does that's totally fine i'm not a fortune teller i don't know where it's gonna go but what really what i'm saying is the probability is that we're gonna get major major gains out of the altcoin market soon there's a bit of fud in the altcoin market now even with uniswap we have a lot of altcoins kind of you know diddle daddling at the bottom of the range not really waking up just yet so there's a lot more room to grow there with a healthier risk to reward ratio now what i want you to think about is getting your get in the shoes of some heavyweight traders think think about what traders would want to do right now would they rather get in at a bottom level pr uh, price on an altcoin on a project on tech on a software company that is doing all the right things great fundamentals and all that stuff great connections good team uh, or get into big Bitcoin that is already quite up there and obviously reward is limited maybe to I would say maximum if we get a 5x out of Bitcoin in this bull run guys that's spectacular 5x for meaning from here right so like you know that would be awesome like super good outperforming you know all our expectations and for that matter in my opinion so really um we know that an altcoin can do 5x no problem in a couple of days like really that's nothing that's really fun a good altcoin can definitely outperform that so i'm looking for risk to reward opportunities right now bitcoin at the end of the day did the majority of the work already like are we done and the majority of the move is brought to us by the etf so again um you know can we trust that can we trust the etf is there going to be market manipulation you know what's happening throughout the summer i don't know i'm a bit on the fence about that i feel like i enjoyed trading crypto when it was the wild wild west because i knew the wild wild west although there was risk and i know lots of volatility a lot of dgens out there and whatever the case is there wasn't systemic manipulation and I can play with, I, I I can play within the realm of uncertainty and volatility by you know just keeping my risk intact. But if there's manipulation, I don't know the rules. I don't know the rules. I don't know the rules uh, of how they're going to manipulate things. And for me personally, I'm not willing to take that chance with Bitcoin personally. So I rather get into the altcoin space because I see what the, these are, companies are, and technically they're companies, decentralized companies that are bringing new tech solutions to the space. And I am investing and in buying pro, uh, into the projects. Based based on that not on speculative you know just to uh, pump my bags based on the value that they offer to the general public and for me that's the, where the value proposition is uh for especially for the altcoins all right so that's what i'm going to be focusing on bitcoin looks very strong for sure uh homer simpson good evening buddy good evening uh john valentine navi let's take a look at navi sure any good tech there and next i'm not sure what that is but sure there's a lot of next next uh ne you know uh, next sarah so many different projects it's all sound the same guys they got to be more creative here easy -E, can we take a look at rollbit rlb is the ticker rollbit uh that narrative kind of like really um went flat um yeah, you've been picking up some that's pretty good uh monopoly on gamble uh gamble fi okay you know the whole gamble fi that narrative is definitely taking a bit of a break you know i think rollbit is a safe play no doubt um but i would be looking i'm also would be willing to diversify into lower cap projects as well okay so find something else that with, within that same narrative that might have some good fundamentals uh maybe like blockchain bets or something else who knows just find something else as well because robit is one of the major players as well and how much more of a, a move do we expect from robit now just keep in mind there's there's levels of uncertainty with that narrative given the fact that it's a gambling narrative i expect that regulation is going to be heavily involved 
involved here. Um, not only do we see, um, you know, a crackdown on cryptocurrency in general, but what about the fact that, you know, it's gambling and you know how, you know, countries, uh, governments don't really want to release the control over that gambling um, sector. So expect something to be there. I'm not really crazy. It's almost very similar to... Um, the privacy narrative it's got extra threats there so i'm a bit skeptical i'm not getting in too heavy on that narrative crip walk how's it going buddy bought movie at 11 cents we can take a look let's take a look at movie movie let's see what's going on there i'm uh i'm doing well anthony i'm doing well buddy uh space let's take a look at that micro vision change space I like that one. It's been doing well for me, but it's been in a little bit of a um, retracement. The bridge is live. Yeah, good updates. I've been following a little bit of what they've been doing. They're definitely doing some good stuff. Uh, layer two narrative. I like the layer two. I, I that For me, that's where it's at. You know, the Bitcoin narrative, having a layer two. I know there's a lot of Bitcoin narrative, the Bitcoin um, runes are coming out and all of that. You know, there's still like mint layer and there's still like space, micro vision chain. They've been out already. Um, stacks. There's a lot of other... Uh, players out there so look as long as you're dabbling in and you're keeping up with the narrative i think you should have some good allocations i always liked space um so i i do hold the bag uh, any chance of a quick ta on space yeah sure we'll take a look no problem uh homer symptom you messed up your stop loss on ina bought in at five cents sold at six now it's on one point funny okay you see it, don't worry buddy it happens don't beat yourself up, up, uh, up over it it happens all the time it happens to the best um you know just just you know find a retracement and get in or if you feel like it's too late you know just find something else we'll, we'll get our opportunities uh think about a month ago was ina around no it wasn't around so in a month from now there's going to be something else something else entering the market where you're going to get the same opportunity they come and go all right so don't worry about it let's move on uh let's take a look at bitcoin let's see what's going on here with bitcoin bitcoin at the end of the day like this is the level this is the area that i wasn't i'm not interested in playing around with this is where people get wrecked as you can see if you've been trading the last 24 hours especially on the four hour guys it's very likely that you've been getting you know pretty destroyed and that's the problem is this whipsaw price action straight up straight down up and down up and down uh, you know no real uh, direction that's where things get ugly and the reason why i feel that way is because the momentum and i use my indicator here this sideways momentum you can see that even the volatility went sideways for a good little while here not giving me any indication that i'm willing to take any uh, positions because unless we have a clear direction i rather not trade to be honest i rather rather not trade i'd rather wait now we got into a nice expansion from right around here we got all our confirmations when we started great getting these um diamond shapes at here at the bottom we started getting a nice good amount of confirmations on the back test and they got a nice rally to the upside and you notice that we didn't even shift um to a a bearish stance yet you know to get a momentum shift we didn't even get that yet so we, we could potentially just continue it's very possible i know the bulls are looking at this as a bull flag i get it and it's very very nice and it does look like it could be but don't negate the fact that it, it could definitely come down to the bottom of the range again and still make a nice bull flag you know a nice uh, um, sideways channel and then continue right so as long as we see the momentum in the chop zone guys i'm taking a break from bitcoin to be honest i wouldn't even be trading bitcoin if i saw bitcoin moving i'd rather get into the bitcoin narrative projects uh, see what's happening with mint layer maybe even stacks or maybe any other bullish altcoins that are doing very very well because we know that if you get into the right altcoins even though bitcoin's running they'll all perform bitcoin right and and it's there there's always a good amount a good handful maybe two handfuls of projects that not only keep up with bitcoin if it starts to run but i'll perform it right and then we see also that the bitcoin dominance is going up and we think that all coins are dying but it's not true it's just as a grand total all the altcoins in comparison to bitcoin don't look well but those handful that we pick those gems those right projects that have great fundamentals they're going to keep up with bitcoin 100 in fact we've we've seen this already happen with with many many projects outperform bitcoin um even you know when bitcoin's taking over the market so this is what i'm i'm waiting for is a bit of a, a an indication of where we're going with this uh, and in the meantime I'm, I'm i'm just chilling out yeah, that's it eth same thing look chop zone momentum stuck right here make up your mind are we going up or are we going down currently 
as we can see we're getting a bit of an expansion here if you kind of see we're building this red area every time we go green in the expansion and we go red to the expansion to the downside it starts to be begin a trend to the downside right a bit of a dip we got a few um red diamonds suggesting that look we potentially got our pivot already and all our confirmations to the downside guys i still don't feel confident even going short here on ethereum to be honest i i'm not interested like even though my indicators are telling me look it could be very possible that we are ex gonna get an expansion to the downside let's take a look at what macd is doing the macd emas are facing up with green instagram bars look i'm not really convinced it's still a very sideways consolidation and it might as well just break out bullish and continue to the upside just because your indicators are telling you something it doesn't mean that you have to act upon every single signal right if you feel like you're not getting the confluence of what you need remember price action is king first first and foremost price action we can see a nice consolidation with a good amount of volume with a decent invalidation of these bottoms because below that we got a bit a bit of a volume gap that we can fall so we need to hold this if we hold above 31 3200 guys we're still in play for a potential continuation to the upside and especially if bitcoin does it expect ethereum to follow suit um right after it okay so let's just keep an eye on that let's take a look at bitcoin dominance and then we'll jump right into the altcoins look at the bitcoin dominance still ba battling let's zoom out a little bit still ba battling out nothing really new or interesting happening but what happened in the last 24 hours is this this is what we can see bitcoin definitely popped up altcoins taking a bit of a beating and we're seeing the bitcoin dominance run up a little bit still still in the battle zone nothing really crazy do we break out bullish and maybe hit 59 percent guys we'll see bitcoin get another impulsive move and run perhaps get up to about 80 80 something like that which would be a great bullish target but well, then after that, we get to the top of the volume gap. We get to previous um, lows, which should be a resistance point. Um, and many people are talking about this 59% level. We have a volume gap right here that we can fly right above. So if it happens, no worries. We just got to make sure that we are in the right altcoins, number one. Not weak ones. We got to good, get good altcoins, number one. Number two, if you're holding Bitcoin, you know, enjoy the gains, right? Maybe take a bit of profit when we get there if on your short-term spot positions. All right, guys, let's move on. Overall, the market in general is still kind of like iffy. I'm not totally confident yet. I'm going to give it time. I don't have to, uh, you know, we don't have to take every single trade. We can be very patient about it. Let's take a look at VIA. Let's see if we get good setups tonight. We got a few good setups last night. Uh, they're harder and harder to come by to the point that we're looking for bull flags nowadays. Like I feel, I, I see myself, you know, coming across a lot more bull flags than any other type of pattern. Now, um, you know, Octa Octavia here is in a little bit of a different stance. We didn't really get a major impulsive move after this one, right? This was probably a listing of some sort, probably when it got listed to Maxi, it went straight up and came right back down. Now we're kind of consolidating in this area and, you know, this was you know take profit zone this was an area to watch out for top of the volume gap bottom of the volume gap and we're coming down to this little gap right here and trying to hold above look invalidations are very clear here this is what i like about this price action at least is your invalidations if we break below th this cluster right here this these lows you want to stop yourself out because after that, you don't know where we're going. Any little peak and valley in this price action, any little wick and bottom could act as support or none at all, for that matter. So what you really have to understand is that we got one major impulsive move and then a retracement and then we do go for another impulsive move. Who knows how low we're going to go here? So the reality is we can get down to about 46 cents, which is, you know, probably, you know, an area that needs to be defended by the polls. But there's no indication of, of that being true just yet. Um, it does look very nice here that we're trying to make a higher low at this level. So this is why I am saying getting in right at this moment is not a bad idea um because you have a horizontal and also you have the bottom of this volume gap to kind of consider at this time right if we start falling below all of this you got to be careful uh put a stop loss right around here build a position into this area and then expect to pop to the upside and just get defensive as we get to these zones right here it doesn't mean defensive doesn't mean exit your entire position what it means is you know take 10 percent off the top trail up a stop loss prepare for a potential correction maybe we might go sideways for a little bit but what about if we get a nice fat bounce off of a, a nice w formation and start running to the upside right so you're buying into a retracement and which is not bad and what i like the best is your invalidation is so clear you have choices and they're very clear stop losses right around here 
depending on how much wiggle room you want to give it and then build positions right into this level with all this accumulation and market participation it should give you a bit of confidence that you're not the only one buying in this zone right so a lot of people are building positions right here for that bounce and sometimes you know even though you see a lot of market uh, participation it doesn't mean that we are going to get the bounce it's just look at least you know that the overall market is in consensus here to be buying in right and the invalidation is nice very very nice and clean so you you know your invalidation is right at the green arrows and the green arrows just represent look that's the best time to buy the dip because your invalidation is so so close by okay that's all it is risk to reward right that's all it is um all right let's move on in fact you know what i want to do here i want to put a, a setup so let's say you get in right around here and let's hypothetically say we want to take profit let's let's put it here for now just for now and then we'll say look we're gonna build a position right into that area and we'll put a stop loss right around here you can see your risk to reward is not healthy if you improve your risk to reward somehow and bring it a little bit lower you can probably get a two to one type of thing which is not bad but really what we're really hoping for is that we break through the volume gap which is a lot of weakness there's not a lot of resistance we've done it before a couple of times and if we can get up to this level you're looking at a three to one over a three to one ratio and you're up 46 percent right sacrificing a potentially four four 14%. The ratio is decent like this. So this is what you really want to do is and make sure that your entry is as close as possible to your invalidation, which is all the way down here pretty much. Okay, guys. So that's where we're at here with the setup. Um, it doesn't look that bad. It looks actually pretty good. Okay, let's move on. Let's see what we got here uh for the next request it's not bad honestly it's okay of a setup. I'm not 100 percent gung ho about it, but um Medicaid, but it's okay. Did I spell this wrong? Met, uh, Cade. There we go. Let's see. Ticker. MC. Did I get this right? Yeah, this right here. No, let's not do that one. Let's do. Where else can I get this? Uniswap out of all places. Tonight, we're not going to do. Use, we're going to use Uniswap charts. Let's do this. Bitmart. You can get it on Bitmart. At least. Let's see what's going on there. What kind of price action we get let's go on the daily we are on the daily nice this is looking good honestly you're back testing all this price action i like it if we hold above 1.4 cents on um, this thing might get a nice the biggest spring off of this back test ever usually we get all these confirmations like this nice spring up confirmation low higher low higher high higher low higher high after you get all these higher highs and higher lows the market starts to get really comfortable with the fact is that the trend is your friend so as you get those bounces and those higher lows people get enter start entering with bigger and bigger positions because of it right so confidence right uh, and, and what's interesting is that we're making this price action with the volume coming down so maybe another expansion is ready to happen any moment so i'm wondering if this uh dip to the downside is done we are getting an expansion to the downside still okay we're in mid expansion down which is not even that bad if you think about it um momentum is definitely coming down the trend on the momentum is definitely coming down the volatility is oversold and it, it, we're beginning an expansion to the downside where the momentum is pushing down so we switched we pivoted momentum from a bullish trend to a bearish trend by having these uh, 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 um, diamonds up top. And you can see that as soon as we're getting here, we're getting all the confirmations that we need to expect a bearish trend. Now, it doesn't mean that it has to last long. Remember, look how quick this one resolved itself very quickly. It could be that the majority is already done. I kind of like this. I just would like a little bit more confirmations. For that matter, we didn't even get a MACD cross, an EMA cross on the MACD. Not even one little green histogram bar yet. It's a bit early, in my opinion, to take risk. But DCA is fine if you want to get a small bag maybe 10 20 percent of your position in and just in case be prepared for what could happen but if you think about it we got a fat wall of, of of you know support right here all this market participation is all year very very nice wall so like you know there's mixed signals here there's mixed mixed signals across the board remember price action is king no matter what oscillators say you know we do have a nice higher low could we respect the trend and come down a little bit lower possible it's all very possible. I think it's a bit early, to be honest, to be totally convicted that it's found its bottom. It's a bit of like trying to catch a falling knife. If you look at other opportunities that happen, we got green um, impulses, red impulses. Look at the past. They look very similar. Nothing is really that different from, for example, this candle and this candle versus this candle and that candle. Like they're similar. So similar. Are, are we going to really take a chance? Look what happened after that. Spike up, people got trapped and came right back down, right? So until we get a higher high, 
and a, or a higher low to suggest a change of character in this structure and i know we're looking at the daily so we, we you know it's really hard because we're kind of going sideways on the daily from a structural perspective and slightly higher highs and higher lows which is good but this dip right now is not confirmed to be done and if we go on the four hour it kind of looks like you know maybe we're going to get a bit of relief maybe a dead cat bounce I don't know, like right now, it's it, the expansion to the downside is almost done on the four hour. You could get in based on a bit of relief to the upside. Just keep in mind that the daily is not totally confident yet for me, right? We're not totally done, in my opinion. We have a bit more to go uh, to a little bit slightly lower. But then again, you want to nickel and dime, start deploying a bit of capital, DCA all into here, and then get in heavier as you get the confirmations. That's the best way to do it. Not bad of a retracement. For sure, you're not buying tops, number one. Look at that. These are the tops. These are the top. You're not buying tops. And if you look at all the individuals that got in here, guess what? You're getting the opportunity to get in like everybody else did right here. But instead of taking risk from a breakout perspective and enduring a dip, you already are buying the dip. You're buying in on a dip. So that means you don't have to endure much. I think the majority of the dip is already done. Okay, so let's move on. This is actually a good setup. I would start DCAing all into this area. I'm gonna put a yellow box so we can be clear about where I think to start DCAing. And it's a very tight range, to be honest. Even starting right now is not bad. All into here. This is all a good area to start DCAing, um, to start uh, accumulating and building your position and looking for those confirmations. That's all it is, okay? Confirmations will get you confident to deploy more capital. EGLD, what's going on there with EGLD? Uh, honestly, I've, it's been under the radar for so long, EGLD. EGLD. Let's see what's going on here. Is this Elrond? It's not Elrond. Is it? I think it is. I don't know. I'm getting all confused with all these. Let's. I don't even have a chart here. Um, that's surprising. Okay, let's use uh, the Binance one. See what's going on here. I think it's Multiverse X, if I'm not mistaken. Or is this just the old... The symbol looks like it. Anyways. Um, what's going on here? It's looking good. Honestly, this thing is actually looking pretty good. You know, nice rounded bottom, and then we're getting a flag, right? Nice little flag here. Some people may call it a nice cup and handle. It's not really nice and round. Look at this nice break above the 200 daily. Trend is beginning to shift. It shifted the trend, which is nice to the upside. Still in accumulation zone. Market participation is loving this area. The neckline is clear. The break of the neckline is super clear. You got all of this, all of this. Top, tops, tops. We need to break above this zone. We break above $70, guys, we're going to start to expand to the upside very clearly. Now, what's happening here? You know, nice nice cup maybe and a nice handle. The retracement is not deep. You know, they usually invalidate at 50% Fibonacci. We're not there, not even close in my opinion. I No, and it's not an opinion, just eyeballing it. I can tell swing low to swing high. You know, we're right around that level. Like 0.5 is right there. So we're doing good still. We're still um, valid as far as a cup and handle, if you want to consider that. Uh, we could consolidate a little bit more above the 200 daily. That would be super bullish. The MACD looks a bit confused, but we're in a state where, you know, we could get that, that rally. We could get that cross any moment. Look at the last time this happened, more or less. We got down here. We got that cross. We got the pale green, uh, red histogram bars slowly creeping up. We could be looking for a pop to the bullish control zone for sure. Uh, the MACD is still early though, okay? Okay, we're, we're, we shouldn't try to front run it. You saw what happened to Bitcoin when the market tried to front run that MACD. It opened up again and it continued facing down and we got another dip today. So that's you try to wait for the crosses and all the confirmations you need to get bullish. Um, and right now, the expansion to the downside is full force. You can see that, you know, based on the previous expansions, just look how it happens. We come down, come down, and we get fully expanded at the tip. Are we at the tip right now? Are we done with this expansion where we start to contract right back up? Even if you wait for the contraction all the way back up to get that confirmation that the impulse to the downside is done, the expansion is done, it's still not that bad. You know, you're going to sacrifice a bit of gains, but at least you know you're not trying to catch a falling knife here. We don't know if this is done. You can keep on going down and down and down. The momentum, you can see the purple line is still trekking to the downside with a very clear downwards trend. Look at the yellow line. The trend is definitely there and the volatility is oversold, which is good because as soon as we get an indication that the momentum is done, done pushing down and we're getting uh, a pivot, then we're ready to, you know, to say, look, all we need is now this volatility to kick in and let's start running. So we're still in an expansion to the downside no real confirmations just yet we could break below the 200 daily ema and it would look pretty bearish so again double top is there class a bearish divergence on this double top um 
let's see yes there is double top nice and flat class b bearish divergence double top on the price action and lower um highs on the rsi let me show you what i mean here you can see that the purple is slowly downward sloping okay if you kind of look here what's happening slowly downward sl sloping and it's not the biggest but it's definitely there so what we got to understand is this whole thing is diverging right even this whole area from here to here uh higher highs on the price action and then lower highs on the rsi so do we finally get a bigger dip it could be possible here guys but i like the fact that this looks like a bull flag you know impulsive sideways so how do we play this the best way to play it is obviously it's risk management and i'm gonna put a horizontal line right here because i can kind of build a bit of confidence into here a bit you know this is the bottom we have another bottom here if we come down here and hold support that would be great we need support at about 46 47 dollars if we go sideways here for a little bit and then bounce up and break out bullish that's a bull flag all good however if we break below the 47 dollar level then we start to invalidate we start to say look we're making a lower low finally we got a double top which is with class a with class b bearish divergence or even class a if you go from here right and then you can kind of say you know we're looking for that follow through and we start breaking down and then we start hoping that we hold down here where we can get a higher low that is not low a low that is not lower than this low that's for sure that's what we don't want so we could definitely do one of these right kind of break the neckline come down and do one of these and then break up okay so that would be awesome and then we start trekking to the upside we didn't get the confirmation low right we've been coming down okay we got follow through and we didn't get the confirmation low the higher low to make sure that this low was the low so maybe we get it now right a lot of these projects haven't really done this yet so um i would say about a month or two ago we've been seeing this all day long almost every chart you know we got bullish divergence we got follow through and then we got the back test confirmation low and then spring that's what we got we got many projects doing that over and over and over starting about two months ago now there are some laggers like egld right that haven't really left the station yet so we got to be a bit patient here let the expansion finish let's see if we can get some nice rounded bottoms um inverse head and shoulders um you know adam and eve patterns things like that and then we'll build a bit of confidence so far you know what buying the dip is not bad you're buying into a bit of a retracement a bit of horizontal support but i wouldn't be getting absolutely heavy right now I, 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 at least you know see if we're gonna hold the previous low and if it's a bull flag great so get into a small pack just in case this is a bull flag now bull flag on a nice extension level let's see what that looks like hitting a nice extension swing low to uh let's do this properly i don't know what happened there swing low swing high to swing low and then you get 1.2 uh, 1.618 1.27s but the reality is look at the magic here look at the resistance that we have above so all the market is preparing for right now at that lower level with all that accumulation is a snap to $131. Really, that's the magic. Look at all this weak spot, right? So that's that's this is what we want to prepare for. Forget all the lower time frame, you know, uh, nickel and dime type of small moves. This is the move that I'm interested in. So if, if everybody in this area is preparing and accumulating for this expansion, which eventually should break right through and maybe consolidate right around here and then leave this volume gap empty. And then you know what I'm going to say, you know, another bull flag continuation to the upside, you know, invalidation, blah, 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 you know, the same thing. But that's the way the market works, guys. It's not a, it's not rocket science. It's patterns. That's all it is. It's cyclical. Everything does. It does the same thing over and over so we're making a bull flag right now this is our first impulse the second impulse is usually the la uh, the largest because we got all the confirmations we need and we have a lot of confidence off of this you know a bull flag that we could potentially you know i would be dcaing all into this area that's all it is dca and stop loss underneath that white line that's it and then expect an expansion if we stop if we break below the white line it's a tough call we got to come down and see where we get support let's move on not bad egld is looking pretty good maybe primed for a huge run okay so i'm gonna put an asterisk on this one and i'm gonna put this one on my on my watch list and um yeah so just keep an eye on it let's see where i'm gonna put this let's put it on my green watch list all right let's move on uh rose let's see what's going on i wonder what rose's market cap is nowadays because rose um i've been i bought rose when it was tiny obviously i sold on the bull uh the previous bull run i didn't hold i didn't hold much um throughout the bear market i had some dust left over from um the previous bull run obviously it's hard to just exit everything but uh for the most part i exited a lot so here we are uh did we get bearish divergence here no no bearish divergence on these two tops um momentum uh the 
the macd is still facing down unfortunately ema is down look at this little fake out that we got here i bet a lot of people got, got trapped up in this expecting to get an ema cross and a green histogram bar and get it you know what i mean it just opened up significantly here and continues moving down um are we a good horizontal support we are we got a point of control and we got this little volume gap right into here okay so we got to hold this level we flew right through this volume gap that we identified right here we flew right through it you can see this empty space that we basically got through um uh, and now it's about what do we do right this was supposed to be red not green rose it's been a while since i covered this one uh, let's fix that it should have been red in fact i could even remove it it's not necessary anymore but is it weak it's there's still weakness here there's still a bit but not not as much because we filled it up as we the price actually came in and there's no bearish divergence here on is there any on the macd none 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 a bit here on the histogram bars but nothing crazy guys look we could go sideways here as well and build a bit of sideways price action fill up a bit of of, of the gap get a, a an indication of market participation and then get another move to the upside very similar to egl LD, it's just that this impulse was pretty hard right so let's see what kind of sideways price action we get here look at the expansion moves here on the momentum momentum is definitely trending down as well okay look you can see that the purple line is slowly trending down we're in an expansion very clearly look at the red expansion wave coming down um and the volatility looks a bit confused it looks like look should i leave or not you know and based on the fact that we're still expanding to the downside from all of this i think we should give it a bit of patience we should just wait and see what happens i think it might be a bit too early to be deploying too heavily especially on the way we can see this right now there is a trend happening and i don't like diagonals you guys know that I don't like that. Let's make this nice and thick so you can see it a bit better. There's a bit of a diagonal trend happening here, you know, with these lows. And we're falling right through. If you use these lows, look at that. You know, it doesn't look the greatest. We need to hold support now. If it doesn't hold support, look, we're going to come down. It's likely we come down to about 9, 9.1 cents. That, for me, is an area where I'm interested in. Okay, so let's see what happens in the next little while. Uh, Rose... Um, you know given the market conditions we might want to be a little bit hesitant and we want to look for perfect setups is there a project out there that is giving us nice rounded bottoms you know showing us that we've hit a bottom this is not showing us we hit a bottom at all this is just like okay do we keep on going down or not and the fact is the all the expansion and all everything's telling us continuation down i'm not too confident to be honest let's move on let's take a look at veracity let's see if we get something else veracity guys we have to find some good opportunities so uh, although these are these are great at least we have them we have our um our eyes on some and we have them on our watch list because that's important as well you know putting um the projects that you like on a watch list and keep an eye on them this is looking good okay I, I, I like the retracement so at least the retracement is bringing us back to the majority of the supply and demand the supply demand is nice and nice and tight look the range is tight your risk to reward is decent you know like it's not too far away it's not like we're up here and, and consolidating like the other two like elrond and rose we're very close to the sideways i kind of like this it's like we're really 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 early here we kind of try to break through the volume gap we we didn't really fill it up too much so it's still a bit of a weak spot you can see that uh but this was the target red arrow if you took profits at this red arrow and you didn't take profits here obviously because it didn't get there it's okay you took profits here you're in a net positive scenario on this trade right buying here on the green maybe not filling your whole bag that's fine you filled in a portion of your bag it ran up that portion ran up you took a bit of profit of there and you're still holding some but you took profit so that's good you're in a net positive scenario now you have some capital to deploy i like the zone we have tops 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 and tops and we have the beginning of the wall of supplying the man here so far this is the best chart of the night i like this a lot because you got a whole wall of price action to hold this up although we are still in an, ex in an expansion phase as you can see we're still expanding down i feel like we're going to hit a wall very very soon we, we, this is probably the area where we're going to get a lot of support here to get that bounce so again watch list uh, keep an eye on it this is good you want to start dca dca in this area because everybody else did and it's likely to hold support now we could the, the market could nuke for sure like nobody has a crystal ball if anybody tells you they know where it's going to go they're lying to you because nobody knows what we're just trying to do is from a, a probability statistic statistical perspective what are the chances we're going to actually break down from this diagonal support that we got going on here let's look at this diagonal look at all these little bottoms that we got going on we can come down even a little bit lower as you can see point of control is right around here we could come down a bit lower but what are the chances we're going to start breaking through all this volume at 
diagonal support, horizontal point of control, a lot of good confluence there. And the, the majority of the expansion is already done. I'm anticipating that the bull, the bears are going to start to show a bit of weakness and perhaps start showing signs of divergence here on the momentum um, and, and things like that. Okay, so let's just keep an eye on that. What's happening with the MACD on this one? MACD is faking people out. Look at this. You know, like, are we going to get the cross or not? Are we going to get a green histogram bar or not? Like, are we going to get a cross open up again and fake people out? Possible. It could happen, guys. So this is where we're at. Like, you know, be patient. Be very, very patient because that's where the market tends to hunt liquidity is for the, from the impatient. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Veracity, not bad. I think this is the best one. Keep an eye on it. Put it on your watch list. DCA all into this area. I think it's a decent one. And, I, and the fundamentals are, I think, are pretty good. Guys, I'm due for a deep dive on this one. Speaking of deep dives, guys, uh, please come and help me. Join the Discord, of course. Go to the Deep Dives channel and vote right vote right now lcx is the project that is winning in the sense that i do deep dives based on your votes you guys come into the discord you guys vote and i do the deep dive right and then i release it on sunday my issue is is i'm not really keen on doing lcx um if you want to come in here and vote up and you know maybe sway it for me like get in here and because there's a lot of good projects out here that are that are newer that may we want to kind of get early in on on some of this inf info and all this research so feel free to join and vote because I, 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 we're right around the corner and i gotta start my research very soon it takes me a couple of days to get really comfortable with what i'm reading and understanding about a project so right now lcx and from the little research and the little what i know of it i'm not too crazy about it to be honest all right let's move on let's move on let's continue uh veracity not bad okay pretty good honestly i like the level the retracement it didn't re it didn't even really leave the station so for me uh that's an opportunity still uh what's this one n-a-u-l did i write this down right let's see uh n-a-u-l let's see no, na that's Navi. What, what's my writing's horrible, guys? Navi, Navi, Navi. Are there any programmers out there? Guys, you guys know what I'm talking about. When do you, I, I never use a pen. I'm always typing. Navi, all right. Um, Atlas, okay, I've never heard of this. Let's see what it is. My penmanship is horrible. My spelling is even worse. Because uh, my, my literacy is uh, <laughs> well-versed in, in, in software and in, in, in syntax rather than English. Um, yeah, so anyways, going sideways here, um, which is pretty pretty good. It's a good accumulation range. I'm wondering if we can get more data on another, on another chart. Let's do that. Let's quickly ch check so that, you know, I, I like my C charts because you usually get er, er, in early KuCoin as well. Let's try a KuCoin. Let's see what's going on with KuCoin. See which chart is a bit better yeah so kucoin it got in on it a bit earlier so let's let's use the kucoin chart here bull flag for sure and it looks like this is the this is the first impulse or maybe this one down here was the first impulse first impulse left the gap that's how i kind of identify impulsive moves did it leave a gap behind it was an impulse it had enough strength to leave a volume gap consolidation very clear invalidation on this consolidation a couple of bottoms retracement another impulse huge volume gap left behind massive look at this all weak spots all weak spots i like these two tops let's kind of analyze let's kind of put a horizontal on the, these two tops here which is important just to kind of keep an eye on you know good levels these two tops are pretty good we begin a good portion of volume in this area which is at about 17 and a half cents and then we get a few impulses more and this is our bigger consolidation right now i think it's a pretty big one here we got a divergence into this consolidation which is not a good sign uh right but we can invalidate divergences let's get make this a bit thinner and you can see that the uh momentum is downward sloping it's definitely and so is the um so is the expansion so as the price action is moving up expansion is coming down momentum is coming down and the volatility is hanging out in oversold conditions waiting to get that bounce at any moment we'll get that bit bounce similar to this similar to this where we get that expansion and we start moving right we we saw the uh, momentum come down how low is it gonna go guys i don't know we could wait for a purple yellow cross which is good which is an ema cross we could wait for that and then see if we change directions uh we can see wait for a another green expansion we already got one green one do we get a red one even on retracements we get red expansions 
and, and even on red expansions doesn't mean that the price has to fall dramatically even if it's just a little bit of a dip we could get a red expansion it could register as a pivot for a red expansion going from green um diamonds to red diamonds right and then all of a sudden um we could get a bit of that expansion to the downside and then maybe continuation i just feel with this class a bearish divergence that we have here you know it starts to give us an indication that the bulls are losing a bit of momentum to the upside a little bit of that strength however However, in a sideways consolidation it gives them an opportunity to recoup basically regroup and get going for another impulse and that's a sign of strength when we see the momentum fully reset and come down like this while we're getting neutralized sideways price action all the bulls are doing is absorbing all the sell-off and there's no dip there's no retracement it's sideways bull flag bullish very very strong what i would love to see is a bit of a volume right into here to give a com get a confirmation that the market is actually getting involved here and there's market participation um you see the volume is not really that active as well right down here so we're getting confluence on the horizontal volume and the vertical volume so i would like to see that the macd is still pushing down emas are facing down macd is still facing down so we're not really getting major indications that number one the momentum and the trend is done pushing down and it's the trend is not even down it's sideways so we're neutralizing a bearish trend here which is okay but the momentum is not done pushing so maybe we go sideways for a little bit longer maybe we get stuck in the chop zone here the purple line gets stuck sideways in the chop zone and you know what happens when the purple gets stuck in this in the 50 percent mark of the rsi which is right here on the white dotted line you see that the momentum is going to go sideways and so is the price action and that's where you get that whipsaw sideways choppy choppy price action which you know basically chews you up and spits you out and you lose all your gains and you know make all kinds of mistakes because of emotional trading i rather wait for volatility and momentum momentum got overbought now we're coming down and and all this area would have been a good time to take a bit of risk right it would have been okay if you shorted i the, the, i get the, the the sentiment but look the, with the divergence there you would have got wrecked so we got to be careful we got to look for confluence and other things the macd is pushing down finally here we get the ema cross all the way up here so that's why i like to look at the macd because the macd helps you with identifying trend reversal and i'm working on a second indicator right now to just focus on trend trend pivots um and that way we can uh, look at momentum pivots and also trend pivots those are very viable because as a momentum trader myself I, I like to look when we see the momentum shift and also it would be really nice to see when the trend shifts and we can isolate those pivots on trend as well so right now we're in that scenario where, well look we're not done we're not done i like this bull flag for sure um if you want to put a horizontal line right into here so that we can identify where this flag gets invalidated if we break below these two wicks down here look we need to stay above and continue consolidating and if we build a bit of volume here on the volume profile that would be solid if not guys it might might roll over without market participation we're not getting enough strength here to the hang time is going to be too heavy we'll roll over okay so we got to pay attention look where the 200 daily ema is all the way down here right we could come down and tag it every time we see the price action far extended from the 200 daily ma we want to get back and see it again look at the last time we got extended we want to get back and see it again extend it again do we want to get back and see it again it could be possible guys back test this theory go look at other charts that have a lot more price action you'll see the price action tends to want to you know gravitate back to the 200 daily every time it overextends away from it to the point that sometimes you know it goes underneath it and then it just does it in reverse okay so this is where we're at i think it might be setting i would again another project that you might want to put on your watch list because it, it, it looks interesting and, and and it could be gearing up for an expansion any any moment okay so uh we got to watch it for sure let's take a look at next you can see that a lot of these charts are not actionable yet and that's okay you know you don't have to trade now but at least you have your plan you have everything ready to go for that opportunity okay so this is actually looking a little bit better I liked what's happening here on the on the MACD. Why? Because I see class A bullish divergence on the MACD, which means that we could be getting a trend reversal very, very soon. Uh, we're in a nice little area with a, a good amount of volume right into here. You see all this price action acting as support, which is nice um, to see. Obviously, we got these bottoms and these, this whole area to act as support. The momentum. If you look at momentum, the purple line got almost to oversold conditions. We can get another little impulsive move and get in the over 
oversold state, which is below the green dotted line. I think I should make this green dotted line a bit thicker, but you get the, you get the drift. The green dotted line, if we could get down here, that gets oversold. And then we start looking for bullish divergence on the momentum. And if we get a nice class A bullish divergence on the momentum, while the volatility is nicely oversold, guys, when we see the orange line, get that bounce and we are getting a divergence on the momentum to the upside that is when we're going to get a huge a nice move to the upside okay another one that should be put on the watch list why because the expansion could be almost done we got a first huge expansion retracement and then another expansion that's most likely not going to come down as hard as it did before okay the, the likelihood is is that it's a bit weaker let's see what happens here um look at that nice retracement definitely hitting a wall of support right here into this area so not bad uh connects a lot of pr good price action today um but no real urgency on any of this you don't need to be buying instantly wait around see what kind of pattern we build because the trend currently is still lower lows and lower highs that's all it is you can see that impulsive move retracement impulse uh, impulsive move sideways retracement what do we do here potentially this is the time where we should get the 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 pivot point you know inverse head and shoulders cup and handles those type of things this is the ideal place to get it and if we do get it then you're going to start deploying and look at the class uh, a, uh bullish divergence class a bullish divergence on price action and compare it to the uh macd look at that okay so looking really nice at least we're moving in the opposite direction with regards to histogram bar trends and uh, impulses you can see that um but the emas are still facing down kind of looking indecisive but still a good sign and a, a bit early pay attention to the zone the, what kind of pattern we get in the next little while okay so obviously another watch list one let's take a look at roll bit roll bit I'm, I'm looking to buy into some R weave guys personally um maybe we should take a look at that one because uh, um rollbit and even um reels looking okay for a dip if it breaks below um i'm interested so rollbit is in a trend a downwards trend very very clearly okay very clearly um it's expansion phase is still here we're tapering we tapered off the expansion phase volatilities to the upside in overbought conditions you can see that do we get another green do we get a green expansion right now to the upside if we get any green down here it's very possible that we start to begin look at the last time you know we get green we look pretty good at least we're going sideways but look at the chop zone we're still in the chop zone in the rsi this is the problem when momentum rsis stochastics anything like that is in the chop zone guys we're not going to get expansions we're not going to get huge volatility moves you can see the orange line how it oscillates right it oscillates going up and down up and down up and down but as long as the purple is in the chop zone don't expect these up and downs to be huge right you need the momentum to be really uh, overbought and oversold to see nice moves in the volatility that make it worth to trade right unless you're gonna have a long-term approach and just hold a short forever and ever and ever with slow grind to the downside all very viable roll bit in my opinion this is this bottom was good i feel like we could come down to that bottom again i feel like this area is not bad i don't have much confluence other than this low which we broke below which we're still making lower lows and lower highs and we're below the 200 daily ema which technically speaking is a in it's in a bearish trend as long as it's below the 200 daily ma it's a bearish trend right clearly obviously even with the fact that we're in a lower low lower high type of state structure it also is a bearish trend so i'm not like you know like what else can we say here are we ready to be buying dips and deploying heavy capital i wouldn't but are we are we in a good healthy retracement for sure like I would be, buy, if you're fundamentally bullish, buy, accumulate a little bit, but don't get in too heavy because we didn't get any confirmations just yet that we're done. So let's wait for something. I would like to, I usually like to see rounded bottoms. Right now we got a nice V recovery. Rounded bottoms are, are, are signs of very healthy accumulation zones at the bottom and nice healthy uh, pivots at the bottom. I like those. That's why we get an Adam and Eve, a nice rounded bottom right here. Perfect. V recovery. Okay. Come down, get a nice rounded bottom and then break the neckline perfect setup then I'm, I'm interested 
because that uh, adam and eve pattern is a bullish pattern especially where we are right now a good horizontal support so something like this nice rounded bottom come back up here and you can see how we have this level point of control as the neckline we break above it we're probably going to get that pivot very soon and start going for higher highs or uh, at least get back to previous price action type of thing so this is where we're at let's see what happens in the next little while i'm not totally convinced just just yet given that bitcoin is looking a little wonky in the last little while okay so again slow and steady uh bit by bit i think uh, we should do well uh roll bit let's take a look at movie movies one that i've i'm kind of like interested in i hear a lot of buzz about it okay let's put it that way people buzzing about movie in the last little while price action this is probably the best look this is what i like to see nice bottoms like this nice rounded bottoms they're not so round but you get what i mean they're not spikes to the downside quick v recoveries those those v recoveries tell you a lot about those buy orders those buy orders are usually algorithmic buy orders uh, on exchanges that's why they they get bought up so quick these are accumulations nice rounded accumulations meaning that people are buying the dip nice and slow those are bulls trying to accumulate over time not just buying one big buy order uh based on uh, an algorithm make buy order going in blind or whatever on an exchange this is very healthy this w formation that we see here we're entering an expansion clearly look at the expansion right here and we're getting our green uh, diamonds to uh, already go, suggesting look we might get that pivot right now and we might get this trend to the upside we have the purple above the uh, the yellow which is suggesting that the momentum is trending upwards and at the same time if we can get this volatility which is the orange line to continue and get overbought we're likely to break above these two th this top right here so let's let's talk about what kind of trade we're in right now this is a breakout right now this is a breakout trade which is very nice looking okay as a breakout trade look if we break above this level with some conviction as we are doing right now we're getting a bit of conviction here look at the macd the macd is also looking really good ema cross to the upside with green instagram bars facing up really really nice you can see the stance that it's in generally speaking everything that is that i'm using to build my my thesis for my bullish thesis is definitely here okay so it looks really good if you happen to buy this green arrow which was the buy the dip opportunity that i suggested who knows when when we talked about this last this green arrow is where it's at you bought here you're in some profit now what are you going to do about it you're right what kind of profits are you in if you bought this green arrow you're in right now up 65 percent more or less which is a healthy profit taking zone i would consider taking 10 percent off the top and maybe even trailing up a stop loss but what about if you break out all good let it break out where's the target honesty previous highs price discovery that's all you got we can get a bit of a rejection right around here. Very possible we got a spike of supply and demand, but it's not that strong. It's not that strong. So just, you know, understand that would probably be a golden pocket retracement, swing high to swing low. And if you look at it, the uh, golden pocket, a point six one eight is right here perfectly at this level. So yeah, maybe, you know, that that there's 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 confluence there. That little spike of, uh, all it takes is a little spike. After the battle of breakout, you know, the bulls are going to come out limping. And all it takes is a little bit of a, a volume pump uh you know previous price action to hold it down so we could get a reaction this might be another area that you might say you know what i'm gonna take a bit of profit trail up the stop loss uh, again obviously on your short-term spots if you're fundamentally bullish and you want to hold for the long term just buy and let it sit don't don't trade that keep a portion to just hold for the bull run i get it but if you have a short-term spot position that you want to trade with um and if you're using leverage 100 take profit take profit and if you're doing short-term spot positions take less profit take less profit trail up stop losses you can be a little bit more li liberal about it because the volatility is less because you're not losing leverage and there's no liquidation points so you can play around a little bit more and be more free about it uh you make less gains of course but you're more free which is good for the emotions and at the end of the day this is not bad golden pocket retracement to the upside and then price discovery at previous highs we've got a lot of areas here to watch out for as this builds its pivot point you can see that this could be a perfect pivot point and then all of a sudden we start asking ourselves is this pivot going to end as a cup and handle and where's that handle going to be placed imagine if the handle is placed right around here right we get we get this nice round the bottom and we hang around this zone usually it does happen right around the high and a golden pocket right around here get the handle and then we can get in for a big huge impulse i'm wondering what the market cap is on this thing let's see if it's a low market cap guys you know this is this is good because it could just be the beginning let's see mubi I'm liking this okay 163 million dollar market cap it's small it's small it's not big but it's not you know uh multi-bit movie i'm wondering what it is honestly now I'm, I'm i'm curious uh this is the website it's an exchange let's see what this exchange this exchange is about 
a mission of multi-bit bridge to serve the bitcoin ecosystem guys this bitcoin narrative is definitely picking up the brc 20s not so much but definitely like the um what are they called i forgot right runes they're everywhere brc20 tokens aiming to break down the interoperability barriers uh, that exist between the bitcoin ecosystem and those of ethereum that's what we need guys there's another project called bob that's coming out um i think it's coming out in a couple of weeks as well that it basically uses the uh, runes in such a way where um it's going to be um ethereum evm compatible can you imagine that bitcoin a layer two on bitcoin that's evm compatible uh, like what why do we need any other layer ones then like in that case it's just gonna be like i don't know that i might take over like i don't know i feel i feel kind of like confused about that bitcoin has the biggest network and all of a sudden it's going to be even compatible with smart contracts kind of interesting here guys you gotta admit okay so this is a good narrative i can see how this could do well um it could definitely do well okay so keep in mind a movie the way it's looking right now with this nice rounded bottom i would be dca now i know you're buying local tops as a breakout trader so what are you going to do about it wait for a breakout and then wait for the back test what about if it doesn't back test and it continues going this is the issue buy a little bit now buy a little bit on the back test if we do get rejected guess where you got to buy back in back to range lows it could come back down to the green arrow again so what you have to do is commit to accumulating in any of these areas as a breakout trader because that's the name of the game we could get rejected right now and come right back down to range lows and you have to commit okay right now the momentum and everything's looking for an expansion watch tomorrow this thing break out okay guys be careful out there but this is looking really good okay uh, worth the risk all right and obviously you can mitigate your risk via position size that's all it is control your position size let's move on let's move on we got, we're, we're flying through these definitely flying through these and we got space let's see what we got here with space all right space 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 Let's see what's going on bit of a dip okay at least we got lots of clarity here look if you're gonna take risk now is where it's at look at that huge volume lots of market participation clear volume gap below which could su suggest weakness if you fall through the volume gap our next la layer or area of support is right here the bottom of the volume gap if you look left we got these tops beautiful clarity this is the time to take risk Okay, that's all it is it's when are you going to take that calculated risk look at the macd ema is facing up green histogram bars this is a great setup so we got two back-to-back -back. movie and space are really good right now um I, you know the expansion to the downside looks like it's almost over it's not completely over on indicator here but you got to admit you got to know that every indicator no matter who's built it is going to be lagging behind you know all indicators are lagging there none of them are reactive uh, uh, you know basically live that way okay so it could be that we, this should already be been tapered in and be done with but it's not as of now i like the the momentum is rolling up which is good and the volatility is also trying to get over by so this is looking like a nice level to potentially take risk okay guys that's all it is now we could fall through the volume gap bitcoin could take a dump and bring everything down with it but considering that bitcoin has been looking bearish what did microvision chain space do when bitcoin is looking bearish it went sideways that's all it did remember this is a daily candle each one each one of these candles represent the daily what did it do while bitcoin was looking bearish and even ethereum and all of this nothing it didn't even care so that means this support level is quite strong there's a lot of people here holding the line which is a good sign of strength and in my opinion taking risk in these areas are the best obviously not financial advice guys do your own thing but these are the best times and i would reserve a bit of capital just in case for down here just in case we do come down at about 15 dollars 14 dollars and 69 cents that would be a great area because we do have some weakness that if whatever happens we do fall um and you can see right now on the daily it looks like we're trying to get above that 200 daily again and if we do it's looking even better if we close the daily candle above that we close the daily candle already and we're pushing down let's see what's happening this battle right now that's happening with this 200 daily you can see that we're getting you know this this whole sideways is crazy range very very crazy range interesting stuff guys look we covered a lot tonight we covered a lot guys i kind of ignored the chat today i've been going at it didn't even uh, see what you guys were up to we have ambassadors we got we got uh who else viera's here uh donkey dong is here how's it going buddy uh a lot of people going in on it nexa's not doing well <laughs> really well but it's okay we're gonna have it it's gonna have its moment um I'm, i don't doubt it and there's some good bullish updates happening in the 
uh, they changed their their marketing director or whoever it was and i think that's a, a very smart thing to do when you know ultimately we're not getting the hype that it needs uh it needs hype it needs hype definitely does guys if i've offered you any value in this live stream you know what you got to do you got to slap the like button it does really help out with the algorithm and getting this channel going if you want to follow me on the socials the links are in the description below feel free to join that discord guys the discord is where it's at lots of good alpha trade setups fundamentals and learning material take care guys have a good one and don't forget buy the dip